It looks like China two sessions Taiwan reference seen as PLA brass calls for focus on urban operations. What is going on, guys? My name is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. There is a lot to go over today. We're going to go over that right now. But just to start you off, China is essentially practicing uh, for urban operations. Now, the U.S. has been doing this for a while now. Uh, it says that the People's Liberation Army should strengthen its study of urban combat. A military deputy to China's top legislative body has said in a clear reference to preparations for seizing Taiwan, the self-run island regarded as a breakaway territory by Beijing. It says that the Chinese military should, quote, speedily improve its strategic capability to realize national reunification, PLA Lieutenant General Mei Yiming told a panel of the sidelines on the National People's Congress an annual full session of China's parliament. <clears throat> it said that Ma, who is also a deputy to the NPC, served at least from 2017 to 2020 as deputy chief of the Joint Staff Department of the Central Military Commission. It says, quote, China should strengthen research on specific issues such as urban operations and logistic support. Ma was quoted as saying in the official readout from Sunday's panel discussion involving NPC delegates from the PLA and armed police force. So this is not, you know, this isn't surprising to most of us that know that obviously China has a long term plan here. And, uh, you know, after speaking with several folks, in fact, including if you did not uh, catch our Friday night Twitter spaces, it was really, really informative. I ended up having a lot of people reach out after that, after a gentleman, I want to say, I'm trying to remember their screen name. I'll, I'll end up uh, putting them on, but it was tinfoil something. Uh, they ended up being incredibly connected, uh, and also what they said ended up spurring all of these DMs to my inbox. A lot of people are talking about how China has actual plans not only to take Taiwan, but to take uh, Japan and Hawaii is included in those plans. So we'll talk about all of this and everything that is going on in the last 24 hours and everything that needs to be updated over the weekend right now. So stick around. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. So if you've never been here before, remember, you can always go over to marfugalnews.com, and you can find every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we're going to show you here today. When you go there, you'll see it's very easy to navigate. Just look for today's thumbnail. Uh, ports could be the first to go. We'll talk about that. Uh, they are, you know, they're now referencing how uh, our cranes could actually be in danger. Uh, this is very concerning. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but every single link and a full bibliography for every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we're going to talk about is right here. That way, if we say something, you don't have to guess and you go, oh, you're talking about a leaked dock. Uh, where's the leaked dock? It will always be available right here. Uh, and then also at the very bottom, there is overflow content. That is all of the stuff that you would get in a bar fight if you brought up. Uh, that is all at the bottom and all of the stuff that is overflow and could not fit into the show. So make sure to go check that out. It is a great, great section. So don't miss it.
And then if you haven't already, make sure to go support the mods. The mods are doing an awesome job, of course, keeping the chat peaceful. So make sure to go subscribe to them and support them in any way possible. They all have either creations, uh, channels, uh, books that you should go uh, purchase, or again, uh, art you should go uh, look at. So make sure to go check that out as well. That's marfuglenews.com slash friends. Let's bring in my co slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Hello, Adam, and hello, Fugal fam. I'm doing just fine. So, uh, so Dex, the focus on urban environments, this isn't something that's really surprising. It's something that they've probably done before, but this is something where the guy has come out and said it, you know, out in the open. We know that they're already practicing in city-like environments because they've created whole mock, uh, you know, Taiwan capitals. They've created... Uh, even downtown areas that look like the West Coast. Some have pointed out that, of course, they've trained on uh, almost all of their fake stuff. Looks like United States equipment. Uh, they, when they were in the desert, basically practicing with uh, with carriers, it was almost an exact replica of our carriers. So they're planning a very you know certain enemy in the midst. Uh, Dex, what did you think about this when it when it went into uh, uh, urban environments and urban operations well there's a couple key points one the the speed at which they needed to hustle it sounds like to get up and running quick more quickly or at least advance the training and i'm guessing it's not uh new to them like you said it's probably just maybe training more so they have a larger force uh that's trained at urban and it's also about the time and then the other thing was they uh, the, the mention about a 7.2 percent hike in the funding for their army or uh, for their military. So that's a significant increase, um, you know, almost 10%. So seven, 7.2%. 7 that's a, a decent jump. They're spending more. So even though they're having financial difficulties, uh, they're spending more on their military year over year. And on top of that, they already have one of the most powerful militaries in the world, them also kicking up the money for it, kicking up, uh, of course, uh, building like we have never seen before. They now have the largest Navy in the world. Uh, they are working on the largest Air Force. The other night in the spaces, somebody said that they only have two carriers. They do have three carriers, uh, but that third one, we don't know. It could have as many pilots as it needs, but this is why we talked about how they were even going to American pilots and trying to get them and pay them whatever to have them uh, man those carriers. They're trying to get them operational right away. I personally believe that with all of the distractions and all of the crazy circus that's out there, one of the things that is not a or not a distraction and more of a, an avenue for them to get us into this next stage of where, uh, you know, everything is going to change is that we will go to war with China. Uh, many people push back on that. RX said that there will be a war on U.S. soil. Uh, few people actually said that. So... That is a thought that is really heavily pushed back on. People go, oh, we're geographically safe. It's almost impossible to invade the U.S. It's less impossible if you, say, knock out a grid first or the USA is, you know, fighting a two-front conflict. In fact, if you don't believe me, just go to the State Department or the Department of Defense and look at their war games. They have actually shown different simulations, including coming up to our ports, uh, knocking out our ports with the port busting uh, boom booms that they've been testing, specifically in areas that look exactly like the U.S. ports. And they would come on in after an EMP or a cyber event that would knock out all the grid. Most of the uh, domestic forces would be focused on trying to keep the peace and keep everything going. Meanwhile, they would split the Navy and also have uh, NATO communications going. They have also now funded and procured all of this different equipment to be able to uh, contact with our NATO allies in that event. Uh, obviously, they have been watching the cords between us and Europe. There's a physical, you know, line that goes between us under the ocean. Right as in the last couple of weeks, they've been watching it hardcore because there's been strange boats in that area. So there are some scenarios where they could be on our soil. And as people pointed out the other night, there's already a lot of folks here. There's an argument by, uh, I want to say it was uh, Mr. Kirk that said, that uh, if somebody in China could leave, if if they were just given the chance, hey, you can move out of China, 
He said that they would, and the people argued, are you saying, well, look at all the people that moved from there to here uh, already? Uh, many believe that, you know, they obviously can move here for times or if they have enough money, they can move here. Uh, but in, in their mind, they basically think that uh, either way, they can be pulled back or still controlled in some sort of way if they grew up and they were a full on citizen of China, unless there was some sort of special circumstances. So basically, people have been have been talking about sleeper cells and how many uh, folks would already be here in the United States. Now, uh, let's see here. What do you guys think? Let me know. I would love to hear your comments on this. And I know that not everybody is on the same page. It's okay not to be. It's okay that if we don't agree, we can we can discuss it. We can debate it. And again, on uh, in the next week, we'll have another spaces where you guys can get up and talk and, and speak with us and give us your opinion. I think that was really, really great. If you missed that space, you really should be uh, trying to go over there and get it. I saw a couple of people that said that they couldn't because they were, you know, techno uh, illiterate. That's okay. We might put out some sort of instruction thing to get it or to sign up. And I don't even think you need to sign up to be able to listen to it. Either way, we'll figure out something, even if we have to uh, record them and put them up somewhere else. So thank you. And I would say if you do go listen to it, listen to the last half. It was really, really fun. Uh, but the first half was our first experiment of a uh, spaces in it. And it was pretty crazy. And then we have a second Ohio derailment raises ire in Congress on rail safety. So this one doesn't look like it has too much crazy stuff on it. But the thing is, many people paid attention to it. When I saw something on Twitter about it, I thought, uh, I thought that the emergency services were responding to the first one, but apparently there was another, uh, this has a, a little place here of where it is. Here is in uh, East Palestine. This one was over here, I believe near Springfield. It says a second freight train derailment in Ohio within a month is giving new impetus for rail safety legislation in Congress as Democrats and Republicans prepare to grill Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw when he testifies to a Senate committee on Thursday. It says the big railroads have weakened safety rules or resisted safety rules for years. Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown uh, on ABC's This Week Sunday says it says, but you think a disaster that happened in East Palestine would give uh, would have gotten their attention. It says Saturday's train derailment happened outside of Springfield, Ohio, about 180 miles uh, west of East Palestine, where the derailment last month spilled toxic chemicals into the rural community, possibly in the air, possibly in the water, possibly in everything else. And again, that's just me. That's not the, the official thing here. Initial reports indicate that there were no hazardous materials spilled in the Springfield incident, and officials quickly lifted a shelter-in-place order. So every derailment, are they going to start just sheltering in place? Like, that's kind of nuts. It says, but Brown once uh, said that he wants to know if there was any residual contaminants left in the 20 mostly empty train cars that went off track. The railroads got a lot of questions they've got to answer, and they really haven't done it very well yet, he said. Brown is the lead sponsor of the rail safety bill that would require more disclosure of hazardous materials traversing states, inspections of wheel bearings, and mandate minimum crew sizes, and it would increase penalties for violations. So one thing that I kind of see with this is so say just down the road and there's a lot more of these and there's very dangerous things happening. I wonder if this would actually restrict uh, how companies, smaller companies especially, end up shipping hazardous materials that are probably uh, very important to society in general. And they might say, well, basically you need to, you know, not travel far with this stuff and it has to be made regional and keep everything regional so nothing has to travel in and out. It makes me think of, you know, how they have done this idea of keeping everybody in little tiny areas. Uh, Dex, what did you think about hearing about the second one? Obviously it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like Ohio or it wasn't like East Palestine, but it's, it's mostly, I think, because people are paying attention to it now since oh uh since east palestine happened nobody's gonna really you know miss any of these derailments there there usually is a ton of derailments but i guess this is kind of odd are, are these attacks are they a accidents are they just you know coincidences certainly uh, it's worth asking the question 
Yeah. So uh, let's go into the next one. And then, Dex, I'm going to have you cover the mysterious launch out of Cape Canaveral appears imminent. Now, this is really weird uh, because it is, again, some sort of classified launch, and people think it's a hypersonic. Uh, but let me make sure, Dex, I'm going to make sure that you can talk here and not be Roboto. Uh, do you want to go ahead? And I'm ready to switch you over if you are. Sure. Certainly the um, the the interesting thing happening at the Cape is there's a space force, a potential space force launch that everybody's sort of eyeballing right now. At least they're talking about it on social media. Uh, and they don't know what it is um, because it's Space Force. So it's not necessarily public information. It's sensitive, uh, obviously, um, uh, and they're not necessarily announcing what the launch is. But it looks like they're about to launch something. And that's what everybody's uh, sort of speculating. So the, the real speculation here they, they're thinking is um, it could be a long range hypersonic uh, weapon. Uh, one of the glide style vehicles where uh, we can get it up really high and possibly go 1,725 miles or more um, at hypersonic with maneuverability. So that's the that's the assumption that a lot of people are making right now on this. Uh, we won't know until it, well, we won't even know when it launches and we won't know unless they tell us something. So if we hear, you know, in a few days, if this launch happens and if we hear in a few days that they successfully tested a, a glider or something like that, that's probably what it is. But this is definitely one of those mysteries. It's sitting out there at the Cape and you know a lot of people can can see something off in the distance but they can't they obviously don't know what kind of details are there i wonder if if uh, there's a good chunk of people that wonder if you know they're already flying somewhere else or getting people off of earth i wonder if if those you know those uh reddit sub threads are a buzz right now um, as far as what it is we'll end up reporting once they actually declassify it or if they don't we'll obviously cover more and see what people are thinking and then this is something that i have told many people as far as uh we covered when we found out that dhs was supposedly uh monitoring twitter i mean this isn't this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody uh we know that nsa we know that fbi we know all of these agencies are monitoring people so that's what i don't understand about like why don't people should just assume uh and that's really sad it, it used to be where the country wasn't supposed to spy on itself. It wasn't supposed to spy on its own citizens. Now, they bent it enough to where, you know, they you give an inch, they took miles and miles and miles. Ever since Snowden came out with the, you know, big, huge news, for about a year it was a big deal. In fact, it they, there was global pushback. I mean, even presidents of other countries were saying, hey, I don't want you spying in my, you know, phone camera, which they had the ability to do. They being, you know, all of these three-letter agencies. Now, uh, DHS, Department of Homeland Security, here's one thing I thought of. You know how they've been warning us about all of the domestic stuff and that we're, pro you know, the domestic uh, folks are the biggest threat right now? If you think about it, and you see a lot of this on YouTube and any other social media platform, you do see a lot of people very pissed one thing you see in mainstream media, you see all of these people totally agreeing with everything that's going on. But most of us are like, yeah, that's not really what people are saying. If you go to the comments on a, under any you know big video of, of politicians or anything else, you see the real comments of like what people are really thinking. I just wonder, since DHS is watching every phone, text message, comment, all of that kind of stuff, that they probably are like, holy crap, look at these people. They're, they're pissed off. But some of those things might be just like trolling or nasty comments or, you know, JB is an idiot or this or that. And they have probably set their parameters really wide. So they're catching all of that. Uh, but it says that there there's a program gathering domestic intelligence and virtually no one knows about it. Now, this is DHS. Everybody knows about the NSA, all of this other stuff. But this is by the, the Department of Homeland Security. It says collecting information from Americans raises ongoing civil liberties uh, concerns. It says for years, the Department of Homeland Security has run a virtually unknown program gathering domestic intelligence. I guess, you know, I've, everybody should assume this. Um, I, I, I don't know how they got away with this. And then, you know, 
like I said, a couple years after Snowden, you heard all these stories and you had all these headlines like NSA is deleting phone records and because they had a lot of pressure on them. Why isn't the pressure still on them not to do this kind of stuff? Well, I'll tell you, I, I think that this is what our future is going forward. We're, we're going to have that, all of this um, uh, watching, monitoring and prediction. Look at what they're doing and what they're deciding as far as uh, criminal prediction and all of these things. If you've ever seen the movie Minority Report, that's where they want to go in the future. They want to be able to to detect a, you know, a, a, I guess a, a shoplifter before they even steal. We've shown you this. In fact, I want to say it was China or Japan, a Japanese company, I believe, made a system that could actually recognize AI, recognize somebody who was about to steal, and it was in the 95 plus percent success rate where it would detect, detect somebody's uh, how how they moved, how they uh, you know how they talked, how they walked, how they looked around, uh, even by their body temperature and all of this kind of stuff. They would be able to tell who was going to steal, and they were accurate about it. Well, in the future, you're going to have where they put in parameters and they say, we want to find anybody who's saying these kind of things. And then we'll put those people on a list and then it will further down and, and kind of subset you. And then they'll th say, this group is most likely to commit a crime. And they might even arrest you before you even do anything. That's where I think that a lot of this is headed uh, on top of many other things. I mean, like this is getting really, really out of hand. Um, Dex, as far as like, you know, DHS is just one of all of them that is doing this kind of thing. Now there's actually documents to prove it. Yeah, this is certainly a, this is a really, really long, detailed um, expose, so to speak, about how and what they're doing. So you guys should go read it if this is of interest to you and you can see more about it. A couple of the examples um, they are supposed to talk when they talk to people and interview them. They're supposed to tell them that they're doing it for intelligence purposes. Well, apparently a year ago, they stopped doing that. Um, and they just, they conduct their, and they're doing a lot of things and a whistle, a couple of whistleblowers had come out and said, yeah, a lot of the stuff we're doing behind the scenes and how we're running things is very political or, um, you know, not being, they're, they're questioning the legalities of how they're going about uh, doing what they're doing. Um, so it's really fascinating. Uh, it, again, it shouldn't to us, it shouldn't be a surprise. Like all of us like kind of know this stuff or we at least assume it and we should assume it uh, for our own you know, security. But uh, we also um, our own privacy, really. Uh, but we should also. Um, but a lot of other people don't know. And apparently there's a lot of things that potentially are going on that might actually be um, not on the up and up and. Again, not a shocker, but when this stuff gets exposed and brought to the public, uh, it's definitely one of those things you want to let other people know that just, you know, leave their head in the sand thinking that, oh, yeah, nothing's wrong. The government's here to help. Yeah. What, what is it saying? The, the government is here and we're here to help. Right. Or the government is here and we're here to help. I think that's that's the number one thing. Daniel says, I'm tired of sharing good ideas with no one to hear it, right? I don't know if you're talking about chat, but there is 5,000 people in there, and sometimes you just got to kind of break into the conversation, and if you're on topic, usually you can make some friends. <clears throat> one thing I see is people will just say something completely, you know, random, and then the folks that have been here for a long time are all talking to each other. I would say, please try to welcome people into the chat. I know that it's pretty, um, it, it's uh, daunting when you come into our chat for the first time because there's so many different people that know each other. Uh, what's up, everyone? Monkami69, what's happening? Breeze, Skeegee Mom, the pipeline didn't, bl <laughs> the pipeline didn't blow itself. Raja will retaliate. Yes, I am Daniel. Woohoo, Marfug, what's going on? And then Bubba One, close stores be used as holding staging centers until they take you to the real CAMP or whatever. Uh, my friend David actually just told me that there's more Walmarts closing. There's been a bunch of them. There's been a bunch of box chain stores that are going, you know, going south really fast. Um, we saw when all of these big stores started closing down, now you have like the malls of America are all like dying. It's really, really sad. People are shopping online, especially since CV. It's like everybody's shopping online and it's killing retail and small businesses. 
It's almost like it was done on purpose or something. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. And then Rand claims to have discovered one of the world's largest lithium deposits. So this is a trip. Um, let's see here. And by the way, so the speech that Elon Musk did the other day, he said in that speech of the Master Plan 3 that there was enough, enough lith lithium to supply the entire globe for years or something like that. And a lot of people were surprised by that right when he said it. It was like Twitter, you know, ended up getting on fire about if that was true or not. Um, as far as lithium, lithium will be tomorrow's oil if we really do truly switch to all electric everything. If you think about that, then they would hold a lot of power. It says lithium is extracted from Chilean salt flats. Chile is home to one of the largest lithium reserves in the world. Armenia government claimed last week to have discovered a massive deposit of lithium, positioning itself as a major player in the global race for the metal used in cell phones, laptops, and electric vehicles. And of course, solar and everything else requires those batteries, right? Mohammed Hadi Almadi, the official of Iran's Ministry of Industry, Mines and Trades, it says that confirmed a discovery on Iranian state television, according to CNBC. It says, for the first time in Iran, a lithium reserve has been discovered in Hamadan, a province in the country's west, Ahmadi said, adding that his ministry believes that the deposit approximately uh, has 8.5 million tons of lithium. So if that's true, it's again, if that number is accurate, it means that Iran now holds the largest lithium reserves outside of South America. Last year's USGS estimated that the total lithium reserves in the world is roughly at 89 million tons, meaning this discovery could amount to nearly a tenth of the world's lithium, which means these folks would hold a lot of power in the future. It says the price of lithium has surged in recent years, largely spurred by ambitious emissions goals by countries in Europe and North America, creating an increased demand for electric vehicles. And again, I like how they put that because it's true. North America creating an increased demand for electric vehicles. Uh, it almost should be forcing uh, increased demand because they're literally telling us that we're going to have to use electric vehicles in the future to save the plan, right? It says, which use, uh, which use lithium batteries. McKinsey study said last year reported 550% annual increase price of the metal. That is insane. Put that in perspective, 550% increase. This is, this is, again, what we told you last year and the year before. This stuff is going up and up and up and up. Uh, I wish <laughs> I, I didn't do investment or anything like that. I don't do stuff like that. But, man, uh, I'm sure anybody who invested in the lithium companies is probably uh, real happy in the last couple of years. It says Thomas Chandler, the prince, of, like uh, Elon, right? Already the richest man in the world, and he's about to get a whole lot richer. It says Thomas Chandler, the principal lithium analyst at SFA Oxford, described the scope of Iran's discovery. It says, quote, the key questions are exactly how high grade it is and how economical it might be to mine. So there are lots of caveats to those large numbers that are put out there, but by itself, a resource of that size is a significant amount. And just a, there is some interesting things here. It goes over the, the uh, what countries actually have the largest lithium. Chile, of course, being that, I believe, number one. It says, uh, let's see here. Shortly after Iran announced its discovery, the Russian state-owned media, Sputnik, ran a story saying lithium reserves have, quote, rendered Western sanctions worthless. So that's a really important part here. Think about that. How closely, and this might be, <laughs> So, Dex, going into some of the other stories that we're going to talk about, especially something that you talked about a few weeks ago, this is kind of crazy because this might put uh, Russia in the position where they want to do favors for Iran and vice versa, right? Uh, certainly. It, it puts them, you know, in a in a position. But let's let, let's also... Let's, let's think about like how much you actually need when it comes to lithium. You know, there were estimates not too long ago that said there was only 14 million tons. Now you just reported, or they just reported in this article, uh, 80 million tons. 
Um, it's been estimated we only need between half to 1.3 million tons, uh, maybe even if you tripled that number, 5 million tons uh, to actually electrify the entire world using the amount of lithium needed to store it. Um, it so when you think about that, that's a very small percentage. In other words, there's a ton of lithium. It's not in, 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 uh, in, in, in demand as so much as to say it's not scarce, right? Um, it's not one of those things that we're just going to run out of. We've got more than we know what to do with. The real problem is making sure it's pure, um, that it's the type that you, the right type, and then also the refinement of it. You have to actually refine the lithium, and that's where the the bottleneck is. When we talk about lithium supplies and making sure they're available for batteries, it's not just pulling it out of the ground. It's that next phase of refinement that that costs so much. MW says, Russia and Iran are partners. Where have you been? So we know that. And again, they're allies. But there are some things that, of course, have been debated, what Iran has done for Russia and what Russia has done for Iran. Let me fix that real quick. And uh, so, like, take this, for example. Would Russia give uh, nukes to Iran, even if they didn't have their own? Would Russia end up giving, you know, nuclear uh, materials for them to make a nuke? Well, up until now, everybody has said no, because that's something that just wouldn't go over. But if you have them basically looking at the and the, that's the thing rendered Western sanctions worthless since they're partners, since they're allies and they're not no limit partners like, you know, China and Russia, either way, that means that Russia can basically uh, use Iran and their lithium for the future and not even worry about the U.S. and our lithium or Chile and their lithium or anybody else in their lithium. So that's a that's a pretty big deal. And then before we move on, China aims to boost gain capacity on a new food security push. They're grabbing up more food. Again, make sure to go over and check out energy. The reason why we have pointed you towards this, again, just since last year, lithium has gone up. And as we just read, 550%. But this is something we have been telling you to go check into for years. If you haven't already, make sure to go out and check out the energy solar generators. Uh, they have, of course, the X2. They have the LT, the small one. And then, of course, they have their flagship, which is now UPS uh, capable. You can get the all-new Flex UPS rapid charger, which can turn it into an uninterrupted power supply. And it's expandable up to 96 batteries, or you can take it portable with just one or two. And it's modular like Legos. You can actually change the inputs. You can actually add a mod that uh, changes it to from four panels uh, max to 12 panels max. Basically, you can plug in 12 instead of four, which is pretty simply cutting your charging in a third of the time. So this is a really amazing system. I have used both. The X2 has really been great for taking with me and, and running power drills off of and using at work. I've been having a great time with this as far as using it for all sorts of uh, power tools. But again, most people use this for camping or taking it with them to power something. Uh, but either one can do this. This is all built in, though. So this is all sealed up. It's all real metal. It's not plastic. Uh, wood grain. This is a really, really beautiful unit. But the reason why people get these is because they're reliable uh, and they will run even in an SHTF scenario. Uh, these are also built like a truck. They're not going to fail you. Uh, as far as these goes as well, they're silent. Solar, the big, big plus is that you will not hear it from three blocks away. If everything goes out, you're not going to be the one uh, with that loud generator in your backyard that somebody's going to come and try to steal. Uh, you'll be stealth mode. So that's a good part. You don't have to spend $5 a gallon gas on it. And of course, you uh, have unlimited energy as long as you have sun. So even if on a cloudy day, a lot of people go, oh, well, what if it's cloudy? You can still get power from cloudy days. Overcast days still get you power, just like you can get a sunburn in cloudy days. Uh, I know that for personal uh, personal reasons. Uh, had a uh, had a tank top sunburn for about three months. So as you guys know, you get a discount with this and you're supporting our independent channel at the same time. You're going to get a special discount with all of the packages. So make sure to go check out which ones you get for which uh, and what is current. Because if you're watching this on a replay, they may have changed. So make sure to go check that out. You can also charge them from the wall or your car. Marfuglenews.com energy. Thank you guys for going and supporting independent. 
All right, and then China aims to boost grain capacity under new food security push. So we've already talked about how they've hoarded a ton of the world's wheat. I think it was 55 or 65% of the world's wheat. They have 20% of the population, but yet they have 65% of the world's wheat and 55% of the world's corn. Now they're actually trying to push that even further. It says the authorities will target capacity expansion of 50 million tons. So on top of what they have, they're trying to get more. It says that China will push to increase grain production capacity by 50 million tons under the nation's drive to bolster food security and meet rising demand. Keeping grain output above 650 million tons is crucial to ensure adequate supply and maintain stable prices. The National Development and Reform Commission it said that the top economic planner said in a report to the annual parliamentary gathering in Beijing on Sunday. <clears throat> so, Dex, when, when we look at this, it's like they're already basically, um, they're already hoarding and now they're trying to push out more food. Do you think this could be getting ready for a conflict or getting ready for Taiwan and sanctions or what do you think? Yeah, they're they're definitely getting prepared for something as it relates to food. And I think it's probably sanctions. It's probably, you know, looking at what happened to uh, Putin and uh, his country uh, after the invasion. So I think they're they're trying to make sure that they've got things in place. The other thing that's in this report and uh, it doesn't show here, but it, it's it's out there. They're increasing their spending on reserves. In other words, what they would import and buy and store by 13.6%. So they already store a ton, like like you said, the largest. They're increasing that storage to 13 by 13 or the spending for that storage 13.6% in this budget. Which is huge. Um on top of the wartime spending and all of this, it's like what are they actually doing? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below and I appreciate all of you uh again Dex uh I'm going to put a note here. It looks like I don't have access to the DLive, or I do have DLive, but I don't have the other. So thank you. And then we're going to talk about U.S. NATSEC officials say China manufactured giant cranes pose security risk. So I've covered a lot of the different things that are going on and my theories, and some of my theories are pretty nuts. And again, you know, nobody has to nobody has to believe me on some of these, but... I do believe that they are practicing for a very specific scenario. Uh, it's funny that they bring up the cranes and the cranes are, these cranes are mostly manufactured over there, are in almost every port city. Now, they're talking about a potential backdoor into controlling these things. What is insane to me is that even this like, you know, uh, incredibly, incredibly important things like these might even be connected and might even be hacked or have a backdoor of course, you know, even the average car has like 160 uh, chips in it. I can only imagine what a crane would have, right? It says, first came TikTok, then came giant weather balloons. Now the Pentagon has identified another potential Chinese surveillance tool, giant cranes. Sounds crazy at first, but then it's it almost kind of seems like there's a, a picture being painted here. Uh, one second, let me let me fix this real quick. there we go and sorry Dex I wrote you a note but I didn't mean all caps <laughs> it says as in uh, the giant ship to shore cargo cranes produced by China based manufacturer ZPMC and employed by many American ports including some used by the US military industrial complex it's crazy we're literally using these Chinese manufactured cranes to outload and unload uh, our military gear. One one thing about these cranes too is these are a huge part of how how we move things around our infrastructure, how we get uh, food, f you know, from elsewhere onto the mainland, and then from the mainland onto trucks or onto trains. If you don't have these cranes, you're kind of in a spot. Uh, it says that, and if even if the system just gets barely backed up, it can screw up everything. Including which we know from the previous supply shortage just because of drivers, right? Including some of the used by uh, the U.S. military industrial complex. It says, quote, there is 
it says uh, made in China electric Okay, it says the crane of out of our existence. In fairness, the Pentagon was long warned against possible security risks associated with the certain foreign made products or equipment, such as electrical substation equipment or airport baggage screening devices last year. The U.S. notably instituted a ban on equipment from Chinese telecom companies Huawei and ZTE, citing concerns that it could be used to spy on American customers. Which, if you remember, you could go into any T-Mobile or AT&T and you would see a ton of these Huawei phones and you could see the ZTE. And what was crazy is numbers-wise, they were on a path to actually uh, blow right past Samsung and Apple and all of them. They were actually projected to beat both of them out. Because you, basically you saw, say, whatever the top-end, you know, craziest top-end phone, you would see the same features, the same 108 megapixel camera, uh, foldable screen, all that kind of stuff. You saw it from those companies and it was, you know, $400 cheaper. And a lot of people started doing that, especially since the economy started crapping out. So those companies were on a meteoric rise. Some believe that they, you know, took those down because it was competition. But most believe that, that they actually had uh, all of this, you know, spyware on them and that they were spying on people. It says the consternation about cargo cranes comes as China's influence over the global shipping industry rises along with its ability to theoretically exploit the dominance for geopolitical gain. The nation has made strategic investments uh, in trade ports the world over with over 25, uh, 27% of global container trade in 2021 passing through ports at least partially owned by top China and or Hong Kong firms, according to maritime research firm Drury. Now, that was one thing about when they fully took over Hong Kong as well. Hong Kong was a huge part of this shipping, uh, you know, crazy, crazy sh shipping industry uh, center point is all of this stuff is now going to be run through China, right? Or controlled by China. It says China produces nearly the entire global supply of shipping containers and controls an important shipping data uh, collection service called Log Inc. 2. It says, so it was perhaps inevitable that ZPMC cranes have been identified as the next possible U.S.-China troublemaker. ZPMC claims to own roughly 70% of the global crane market with its equipment at work in over 100 countries. They account for nearly 80% of the ship-to-shore cranes in U.S. ports, and it says, uh, in 2021, a Defense Intelligence Agency assessment found that the cranes could conceivably be throttled or shut down remotely, potentially destabilizing supply chains and could gather intelligence on equipment being shipped by the uh, military. So when you're in these big cranes, I'm sure they've got cameras all over them. Well, now they're connected. And not only that, you're talking about it's something that if it's proprietary system or something that has to be, you know, hooked up online to be able to communicate with others, they probably have systems in it so they don't hit each other or so they don't, you know, safety things. Uh, just like DJI drones, it's like there's that signal could also be then doubled and sent somewhere else. So this is really freaky to even think about. Uh, because these would essentially shut down the supply chain. We have let China in a position where they control 70% or 80% of the ship-to-shore cranes. 80%. That's four, basically four out of five is controlled by China. Uh, on top of the many other things that are controlled by China, including a huge chunk of the, the lithium trade as well, uh, you're talking about uh, antibiotics and the uh, the... APIs, uh, the the active pharmaceutical ingredients for antibiotics, almost all of it's controlled by China. How did they let this happen? I'll tell you how. Somebody was getting a big paycheck in their pocket and they sacrificed the future. A lot of people did. Uh, let's see here. Mm, let's see here. Hold on one sec. Uh, let's see. All right. Hive Mind Society coming soon. Yeah. Well, we actually, we mentioned that uh, talking about the whole Neuralink thing too. Think about that. Other 20% controlled by Saudi, says Pete Blog. Uh, Pete Blog. I don't know I, if that's true. I would, uh, please send me something. I would love to 
who who does control the other 20 percent uh let's see here dope heathen says they need to be brought to justice what like everyone above us probably vicky brooke china does the most shipping because the u.s buys tons of stuff more than anyone else we buy junk china makes good quality but we settle for cheaper poorer quality at walmart or kmart and buy uh buy another so you are absolutely right and i'm glad that you added in that they can make quality because they have made military parts for us for years countries from all over the world and i know a lot of you have already heard this but a lot of countries around the world uh, gave them the ability to design and and to actually manufacture all of their high-end stuff so the the cheap knockoffs that you see in the reputation they got was for the you know cheap chintzy uh counterfeit things they did that on purpose they they basically didn't have to pay almost any labor and they could manufacture almost anything and the, because of the laws are absolutely crazy there there's you can counterfeit stuff and and uh, nobody around the, the world can actually do anything about it so they did that but that's not uh, that's not their capabilities their capabilities is insane now all of these countries wanted even a slight slightly less uh, labor for the advanced stuff and they did it the US was sending things I mean we've reported like 10 different things in the last like six months uh, including with like jet parts and, and ejection seats and uh, and landing gear and all sorts of different things that were made there. It's like, why did they do that? I mean, we I don't think any of us can answer it. Most of us just, it makes us mad. National security officials did uh, have not identified any malicious crane behavior yet. Of course, they're not just like swinging around and bashing uh, Americans, right? But the point is, is if they wanted to, if an SHTF situation happens, they knock out power, even if it's backed up on generator, they can go knock out the cranes so we wouldn't be able to load up our tanks. We couldn't load up our tanks into, into containers uh, because they would have control over it. It's absolutely stu stupid. Uh, it says TikTok, well, last week the House Intelligence Committee uh, voted to advance legislation that would grant the president power to end TikTok. Oh, that's separate. All right. Brian Stevens, thank you for being here. Warren G. Compromised, I guess you could say that. Uh, they're, they're, well, the cranes are definitely... China cranes aren't big enough to swing. <laughs> oh, you got me there. All right, Android Architects has seen. They could fully destroy us if they wanted to, and we gave them a blueprint and all the parts on how. Why, well, and people, we don't really... We don't exactly know who did Solar Winds either. Solar Winds could have been them. All right. Uh, let's see here. All right. One sec. All right. And then Dex, if you can, I'm going to fix some stuff here. Do you want to talk about China dismisses American concerns about the cranes and their response? So they think we're crazy. Um, they think yeah. we're paranoid. Uh, they think, you know, this is just a bunch of hubbub that we're, uh, we're now worried about that. Um, so th the officials uh, have come out and said specifically that the U.S. is being paranoid for expressing concerns that shipping cranes manufactured in uh, Xi's country could be used for espionage against the United States. Um, I don't know if it's as much espionage as it is just even shutting them down and causing all sorts of problems. But yes, all of those things are potentially true. And in some regard, uh, I guess it's possible anything made there could do that. I mean, the other question I think they should be asking is what about all those transformers we got sitting throughout our grid that were made uh, in G's country? Can they be, can something happen with them? Um, and more so what happens when we need more and we're in a conflict with them and they're not going to give them to us. Um, so there's a lot of these things, and I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to see more and more stories like this. It's going to come out that there's another key infrastructure piece or something else, or they're going to talk about the Transformers or something else, and they're going to paint this picture <clears throat> back towards China and, and show how, you know, bad something can be with them and how we, you know, we all should be in alignment to think of them as the enemy so that, you know, when conflict does come up, we're all in the right mindset to support that at a national level. And as you know, the whole message has been all of a sudden to go against China when it's like 
all, always before it was like this was all hidden and they they talked about it they briefly talked about it but now they're really telling kind of mainstream media is pushing out there that China's the bad guy right what do you think do you think that they're trying to get our support for a future conflict do you think that they are distracting us with it let me know in the comments down below Ilea, thank you for the reminder the tinfoil tricorn that was a great conversation there was several great conversations actually uh, there were just a ton of them on the, at the very end there. Uh, Dex, actually, it was so late that you had to bounce out of there. Um, I, but, yeah, that, that was a great, great second half. We had just person after person. Maze Love, uh, the Twitter host, she actually hosts some of the biggest, uh, biggest Twitter spaces there on Twitter. And she ended up becoming the co-host at the very end uh, when Ilea dropped out. So that was awesome. Uh, Dex, go ahead. I was going to say, if people want to listen to it, it is on our website. You can click through, and it is playable on yeah. Twitter, and you can play it even if you're not logged in. So it's there. It's been there. Yeah, some said that you was making them, but I, I don't know if that's on certain phones or what, but especially if you're on your computer, you don't have to do it at all. If you're on the phone, maybe go to uh, desktop view on the browser or go to like Chrome or one of your Safari browser and actually go to desktop view. I don't know. Uh, I didn't have any problem clicking through with it without being logged in on other devices, including I listened to it with a tablet. Uh, Kara Fuse says, okay, guys, help make our leader able to keep us in the know. And then Kara Fuse says, it won't let me write in chat unless I donate. Uh, there should be no issue with you, Kara Fuse, so I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I would say close the app and then go back into it. Uh, you're a long-time Fugle fam, so wouldn't Unless somebody, you know, the chat was going fast and they accidentally muted you or something. I don't know. But uh, I, I don't know. Make it last media. And if it does persist, let me know, Kara Fuse, or email me at adam at marfuglenews.com. Carol, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. Uh, make it last media. Uh, great name. Thank you so much. Carol, thank you for supporting Independent. And then Be Real Beast, uh, thank you. Send me another email. Uh, let's see here. I will have to make a note of that. I, if I don't make a note, I forget. All right. Thank you, B-Roll. And I will, again, I'll, I'll write a uh, note about that at the end. Because I have to go over all of these. So, All right. And China accused the harassment after dozens of its ships surrounded disputed island. So it says that the Philippines have accused China of harassment after a Chinese naval ship and dozens of other vessels surrounded the contested islands in the South China Sea. The Coast Guard on Saturday said that 42 ships believed to be a part of China's maritime militia had been seen close to Tietu Island, uh, also known as Pagasa, which is Philippine-administered territory in the widely contested Spratly Archipelago. It says a diplomatic dispute between Manila and Beijing over claims to the resource-rich South China Sea has intensified in recent weeks since the Philippines struck a deal with the U.S. to allow more troops to access its local military base. It says on Monday, Commodore J. Torella, uh, a Coast Guard spokesman for the West Philippine Sea, said that the vessels are still in the area, adding that this is a form of harassment. I also want to point out when you have that many ships together, period, and if they're outside their normal areas or if they're hanging out, we should pay attention to it because who knows? They could start gathering and actually, uh, uh, I guess, what what do you call that? What do you call when you gather uh, for any of our military members or just somebody smarter than me? What do you call it when you gather uh, military together? The actual term for that. Do you, are you thinking of loitering? No. Okay. No, it would be like a. It's a military. It's a. It's a general word where, let's see. I bet the sequester. Well, either way, somebody's probably going to say it. Where before you go into battle, you get all of your forces together, a mass. A mass. I mean, yeah, they could be amassing. I knew, I feel like there's a very specific word for it, and I cannot remember it. Stage. Dylan Thomas, that's not exactly what it was, but that's a much better way to put it. Assemble or stage. Ocu occupy. Yeah. Stage and, and uh, amass. 
assemble. Yeah, all of those. We could go through the whole <laughs> go through the whole book of synonyms, and probably all of them would work for what I'm trying to say. I, I just wonder if, if something like that could happen there too. Uh, but otherwise, we know that there's been a lot of weird backdoor talks and things been going on with the Philippines. Philippines is a very strategic, important spot, and the U.S. is doing all these kind of deals with them. Uh, for them to amass these ships, or at least 42 of them, and it does look like there were some big ones there, uh, we'll have to see what's going on here. And remember, they also have their ghost navy, I think they call it, the basically the fishing navy or the fishing militia or whatever, the felicia. Yeah, not going to go there. Not the masculine version. Um, let's see here. Uh, but we do know that they have all sorts of fishing boats that are actually secret military ships with 50 cals on them that look like fishing boats satellite. But these even look bigger than that. These look like uh, some pretty big ships. Let's see here. Yeah, so that's a lot of boats. Uh, Dex, do you think they're just trying to scare the Philippines or... or what do you, th I, I don't get it. Like, are they, uh, they're surrounding these areas and stuff like kind of like a puffing their chest type of thing. Or do you think they're, they're certainly instigating something here, whether, you know, I don't know if they're looking for to actually take any action or if they're just uh retout, you know, one of many forms of tit for tat, you know, all the work we did with the Philippines in the last month, expanding bases, doing the largest drills, uh, all this other stuff that goes right in the face of G. So um, he's not happy with the Philippines, even though they've been a longtime ally of the West. I'm sure he was hoping it wouldn't be as strong uh, as it's been in the past. And now it's even stronger. <laughs> says, I thought this was a family show, says Hip Monkey. All I said was fishing militia, Felicia. And because you took Spanish, you got that joke, but again i don't think a eight-year-old would and then uh let's see here uh before we move on make sure to go over and check out emp shield i appreciate that marfuglenews.com slash emp if you want to protect your cars your trucks your solar generators your gas generators or even your house or your ham radios they make a device for pretty much everything that you want to keep running after emp after emp after emp hits all three phases uh, or even a CME, a coronal mass ejection happens. This will ground the signal in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it's able to fry your engine, or I'm sorry, your car, uh, your truck, your boat, whatever it may be you have this on, including your motorcycles. Uh, these devices are Keystone military tested. They're used by agencies like DHS, DOD, and now they're officially on the Dempso team helping protect the Texas grid. You can go over and check them out. You're going to get $50 off per device when you use our grandfathered in code. And you are also going to be supporting our channel as well. Go over to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. And remember that always stacks on top of any sale they're doing. So if they currently have a sale or any other offers that they do, make sure to use that because that will stack on top of it. That's marfuglenews.com slash EMP. And then also ask about the micro. They have the new micro, which is about a third of the size, and it can fit into almost any tight spot. If you had a car that had a really, you know, complicated, uh, you know, some of the some of the newer cars actually are really hard to get uh, get the uh, regular EMP shield in. Uh, the micro works really great for those or for smaller devices. All right, same protection and about the third the size. And then Taiwan warns of China's military sudden entry close to island. So something's going on here. Taiwan Defense Minister Chao Ko Chang warned on Monday that the island has to be on alert this year for China's military's sudden entry into areas close to its territory amid the rising military tensions across the sensitive twait. 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 I'm Tweety Bird now. Twait. China has stepped up its military activities around Taiwan in recent years, including almost daily Air Force incursions into the island's Air Force identification zone. However, Taiwan has not yet reported any incident of Chinese forces entering its contiguous zone, basically past the ADIS, which is 24 nautical miles from its coastline. Answering questions from a lawmaker in parliament, Chu said that the Chinese People's Liberation Army uh, might find excuses to enter areas close to Taiwan's territorial air and sea space as the island steps up its military exchanges with the United States to Beijing's ire. 
It says that uh, he said the PLA might make a, quote, sudden entry into Taiwan's contiguous zone and get close to its territorial space, which the island defines as 12 nautical miles. It says, I specifically make these comments this year, meaning they are making such preparations. He said, looking forward, they would use force if they really have to. So he's being super, he's saying specifically this year, it sounds like something's going to go down, or at least that's what he's saying, right? Dex, he is saying, I specifically make these comments this year, meaning they are making such preparations. Looking forward, they would use force if they really have to. What do you, this, I, certain, this certainly poses the idea that the timeline is a lot sooner uh, than a lot of other people have been reporting, which is a little further out. I think at least for Taiwan, Taiwan is going to be this year. That's what I think. I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't see it. I mean, we're all, we're in March, right? I don't, I don't see this being a 2024 thing. I don't see how it could, I mean, I know that if months, time flies by, but I don't see how it could end up going even further. At latest, like maybe January or February of 24 or something, like a year out. But they already did those drills. And if there's any patterns here, it seems like about a year before these big military movements, they do a lot of these drills and then they go in and do the real thing. But what's your opinion? Do you think it's never going to happen? Tell me why. And then China's social media sounds the alarm bell about India's development as Apple's next hub for iPhone manufacturing supply chain. So obviously there's been a lot of really bad hits to Apple this year. Dex, you know, you, you of course are an Apple, uh, an Apple guy. Do you want to go over this and, and yeah, this is, and this is mostly uh, about, um, India and China and the fact that they on some areas are uh, partnered when it comes to drills like in in bricks and other other things that they're members of but at times they're they have a lot of conflict and we know along the borders they have conflict they have their own um, they're obviously competing as the largest nations uh, population wise uh, India is going to be taking them over if it hasn't already um, and this is significant in the sense that um, Apple is one example, but it is their shining star example. In other words, it produces a ton of manufacturing for uh, the mainland uh, of China. So if they lose that business and it all it, it migrates to other other countries, that's going to hurt their their GDP. It's going to hurt their production. And it's not just the Apple alone. That's just one, but it's the big shining star. And if they walk out, then you're going to see a lot of others start to follow suit. Um, so this is a big deal in the sense of the, the competition between uh, India and, and China for this type of technology. It's, you know, um, obviously... Last year, Apple had a huge problem with all the shutdowns and it caught it actually hurt them financially. So on, you know, from their point of view, they're saying, hey, we have to diversify. We had all our eggs in the in the G basket and he decided to, to close his basket and quit playing. Uh, and we it, it cost us. It hurt us. So that was a big deal. So I think that's that's the, the big takeaway here is we watch we got to watch how the manufacturing shifts may change um, if they do at all. Because if they do and India or other countries start picking up a significant amount of manufacturing, that can be a, a huge hit to G. It can be a huge hit to their GDP and the money that they use to finance their uh, uh, their military and uh, their spending there. And it's, it's just crazy is the whole thing with uh, India being allies with Russia and essentially letting them or helping them skirt around sanctions in the very beginning. Uh, for example, when, when, uh, Russia, when everybody stopped buying their oil, India ended up purchasing six times more than they did the prior year before the invasion to kind of make up for that. Well, India and China have always been on the opposite end of the table. They've had some financial agreements and things, but They've never been military allies. But then we saw actual military drills with Russia and India 
and China. Like I said, they were just kind of like the uh, the two, you know, you have two best friends and they don't like each other and they they deal with each other so they, they could uh, go out and have a fun day with you, but they both hate each other, right? Well, it seems like they've been working directly with India on some things. At the same time, they've got this age-old kind of dispute over the Himalayas and Tibet and all of these other, you know, they basically don't have a border on both sides. But what I find strange is before all of this started, they had military uh, base kind of setups and temporary setups on both sides of the border or the moving border. And all of those troops and all of those mobile hospitals and the things that they had set up along those, they all moved away. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was like something happened there. And that was right, right before they ended up at that same drill together. So imagine this, the reason why that makes sense, that makes, you know, any difference is imagine if India and China end up agreeing China gives them the land that they wanted say you can have that we want Taiwan Japan and you know Hawaii you can have you know Tibet's yours just have it but you got to be on our side if they ended up being a China ally and saying okay we're gonna take a seat at the table with you guys when it's done that's a scary thought. 1.4 billion plus. India has now beat out China in population. And China is actually decreasing their population and encouraging people to have more kids. It's crazy. But that's 2.8 billion people. It's like over a third of the population of the world. Uh, in the United States, what do we have? 380 million? That's nuts. Russia and Iran's secret nuclear deal would allow uranium transfers to Tehran's illicit weapons program, sources say. So, Dex, I'll let you cover this one because this is a, we could take a quote from two weeks ago of yours. You said this to the T. Like you, literally, this is exactly what you talked about. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and I did, I reiterated it last week as well on Friday. Uh, we We talked about the uh, leverage that um, Iran has with uh, Russia right now in the sense that Vlad really needs their equipment and especially the drones. A lot of that was cut off um, and they're trying to, you know, bring it back in, but they're trying to also deal with sanctions, but he needs it. Um, that to me, it, it gave the idea that that gives them a lot of leverage where they could gain things like you know, componentry or even go so far as to gaining nuclear material. Uh, what's being presented now is an unnamed source uh, of foreign intelligence is uh, speaking to the media and says there is an actual deal in place. So that's uh, there's a deal in place for enriched uranium that will flow from Vlad to uh, Iran. So if that is true, um, that's going that's going to be a huge uh, deal breaker, so to speak, in the, no the whole idea of um, how they want to negotiate and get them to, to quit uh, making um, the and uh, in, in trying to enrich their own uranium uh, for military purposes. So uh, this is a huge deal. Uh, it could just be that this is just a yet a giant Ganda piece that's set up to justify um the next thing because the next thing as we've talked about is is israel going in and they've said they're going to go in and take out their uh nuclear program which is all underground it's it's really deep underground so they're gonna have to go in pretty heavy um major sized bunker busters if they're gonna think to get down there or who knows maybe even some form of tactical uh they've said they're gonna go do it and they said they want the u.s to come with them we've went and we've drilled and trained with them uh, we did that about a month and a half ago or two months ago. Um, we've sent our CIA director there. We've had uh, conversations with Millie and others there with is. So we know it's about to happen um, potentially because that their government is saying they're going to do it. Uh, and they even said they're going to do it without us. Even if we don't join them, they're still going to carry it out. So um, it, this could just be another piece to help support uh, that notion in the public. But in at the very least, if this is true, it does confirm what I 
what I've said, what I thought is they have a backdoor deal. I mean, they're allies, of course. We all know that. We've talked about that. But when it comes to something as significant as this, they would need to have a lot of leverage. And the fact that they can produce a weaponry that's needed right now in UKR, um, that gives them a lot of leverage over Vlad. And that's what I was referencing to earlier as far as like, you know, the, there's been the drones going to Russia. There's been potential parts going back. And that whole the whole thing with the lithium and if Iran really does have this huge lithium store, they could totally kind of skirt around the U.S. and all of the partners and just say, F you guys, right? And then the German company that makes Leopard, Leopard, and Panther tanks wants to build a factory in UKR. Are people not... Okay, so to make the factory, I'm assuming that's kind of a long-term thing. <laughs> Even in wartime, right? They'll do it very fast or they'll do it pretty fast, right? This sounds like World War III type of manufacturing, right? What if Germany uh, and others actually all go over there and make factories and they pump out tanks like crazy? We covered how like Russia said they uh, said that there's one factory that makes these tanks and they can make about 20 a month. We still don't know that for sure, right? I, I th who knows? They could have four other secret factories able to make you know 100 a month. But they've said this. Now they're basically saying that the German company that makes the Leopard and the Leopard and the Panther tanks are going to possibly put a factory inside of Ukraine. It says a German arms giant wants to build a tank factory in UKR. It says talks with the UKR government are promising and I'm hoping for a decision in the next two months. Armin Popgerger, the CEO of Rheinmetall, told the newspaper. Rheinmetall makes an array of weapons and ammunition, including the Leopard 2 tanks that Germany finally offered to send to UR in late uh, January. It says that its latest battle tank is the Panther KF-51. So just two months ago, they decided, oh, yeah, sure, we'll give you some. It was a big deal. Now they're like, oh, we'll, we'll just make a factory there and start building them. There, uh, Dan, who was uh, currently serving... Uh, ended up calling in on one of our call-in shows. And his theory was that they might be possibly loading up all of these tanks, all of these, uh, you know, all of these supplies, the anti-air, the Patriot system. All of this is going to go over there. And when UKR is done and they're tapped out, that NATO soldiers are going in to replace them. There would have to be a huge switch in how they are pushing this on the world, and they would have to say, you know, oh, we're we're going to conflict or some big event. What's crazy is this would be a very soon thing if Dan was right. What it would also be soon then would also be that Fantastic Freddy event. Some sort of Pearl Harbor 2.0 would have to happen to get people to support this thing. The approval rating for the UKR conflict is at an all-time low. It's like at 57% or something, uh, you know, almost half don't want this thing to happen. And that's not really that good for, you know, them trying to keep this thing going. They also kind of make it like, oh, you know, President JB went to uh, all of these places to garner support and say, hey, I'm willing to go there and take a train and hide in some luggages and, you know, do all this because, you know, you you better support this conflict. We're we're very confident. You know we're so confident we'll walk right in there. We found out that they called Russia and said don't attack us. But anyways, it was a whole sketchy thing. But in reality, the people of almost the entire world have been really pushing back against this. You know how that would change? A big Fantastic Freddy, a big event that turns everybody into just blood filled eyes we want to go enlist me where do I sign up like a 2001 event where people are like oh I'm going to go and take these guys out myself that's what I fear if if this is the time if the timeline is what we think it is then this is all happening very very soon and if this is truly as big as we think it is 
then, you know, in 2023, China, Taiwan, Russia, NATO. That would be pretty big. Uh, Dex, do you get what I'm saying? And I'm not saying in the best way, but I think most people get what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I get it. I think it's a big deal. Um, you know, the, going back to the to the tank story, though, specifically, they're estimating they could they didn't give a time frame, but they said they could build it for two hundred and twelve million. That's not a lot in, in cost. Um, I mean, it's a lot like to us, but to when you think about it, it's not a lot. Um, and they also said they could produce four hundred of them a year um, for the Panthers. I don't know what the how the leopards or leopards, however you want to say it, are. Um, but they're also estimating they need 600 to 800 more to complete the conflict or to win it. So they do need, um, if they're going to get this level of tanks, um, they're going to need, if, if they're projecting that number, that's pretty significant. Um, and that's just for that, let alone, what are you going to need for all of, uh, you know, Eastern Europe, if, uh, this expands beyond UKR and turns into a full on conflict, like you're talking about, that's going to be a lot more says, asked if it would be dangerous to set up an arms factory in the middle of a war zone. He responded, no, anti-aircraft protection wouldn't be difficult. They're confident. Some believe that they are going in there and they're eventually going to start going over the border and taking over Russia. Some are in that, that camp of believing that they're actually trying to take Vlad out. But Vlad, of course, has, you know, Xi is a no-limits partner, so I don't think that it would be that easy but who knows it all may be just one big lie uh let's see here uh, he told the publication the ukr people do not have the equipment today to fully retake their territory russia may not have as many resources as the west as a whole but so far i have not seen that the leadership around putin is making any concessions to its aggressive course towards ukr Pat Berger and UKR needed between 600 and 800 million, I'm sorry, 600 to 800 more tanks to win the conflict. And he wanted to ramp up production as soon as possible. I like how they even guesstimate, like, I think we need 800 more tanks to win. Like tanks are the only, you know, only thing, right? I think they would need a lot more than that if, if Russia is surprising like they did in uh, World War II. And then, uh, thank you, by the way, uh, S Steve McQueen. Thank you for subscribing. And then, thank you, Jenna B. Official. I appreciate the super thanks on the Something Is Off show. And then, user UE8LC, thank you for, uh, of course, your super thanks on everything points to it. Uh, Jenna Mathis, 7386, thank you for your super thanks on the next stage. It's nice to see you, uh, Celtic Warrior. And, of course, thank you, Danish Girl, and everybody else in the chat. We've got Anthony Duggar, QWERTY. We have Scratch, Rons, Hawks, Moon Actual. Let's see here. They are going to have a bad test, and our leaders will flounder. Uh, Monk Me says, got to work early. Good night, everyone. Good night. It's nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Red Vaughn, prepping tips, promotion helps your social credits. Uh, let's see here. Putin should come out and say UKR was being used to produce biologicals like Boston admitted they did. I doubt that will happen, though. Celtic Warrior, again, thank you. Brian Loves Bacon. Hello, Marf. Uh, BNGT20, what is going on? Ashad Lev. Uh, Randy, man, it's nice to see you here. Marky Sparky. Hey, have good good time at work. Try to listen to us if you can. Tom Brady, it's not about the money. Tom Brady. Oh, okay. Uh, I can't be drafted, but when it happens, I want to use my rifle. I know people that want to get drafted. They they just want to go to conflict that they can't get in the military because they're out of the, you know the, they're out of the parameters. But they want they want this thing to happen, and I'm like, you are crazy. Uh, let's see here. And then thank you, uh, Be Real. Thank you, Kara Fuse. Thank you. Uh, make it last. I appreciate that. And then U.S. blocking Russia from participating in the Nord explosion probe. Many people are looking at this and going, what? That doesn't look like 
you know, bad at all. So the U.S. is actually blocking Vlad's country from participating in the explosion probe. Of course, Russia is saying, looky, looky, looky. That proves it. That proves that they did it, right? It says Moscow has no doubt that the United States is preventing Vlad's uh, country from participating in the probe into the explosions of the Nord and Nord 2. It says Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rabkov told a press conference on Thursday. It says, quote, we were not allowed to involve our experts in the investigation, neither as participants in the probe, nor as experts, including from Gazprom. Undoubtedly, the U.S. is behind this, he said. He also called on the U.S. and its allies to stop obstructing negotiations on this topic. It says, quote, we want to resolve this situation from a legal point of view. As far as I understand, there have been certain negotiations on this issue and they will continue. I hope that all participants understand the need for such ne- negotiations. Dex, would, would, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with something and, and the U.S., if, say, they didn't admit anything, but the U.S. somehow builds it again or something or or is financially responsible because they go through like the UN or go through something and they end up you know from Vlad's country no like somehow they can they sue us or something if they if they proved it on their own could they sue us to like rebuild the thing could it come out over finances they, they're saying hey, they make us sanction us, but that's not going to do much good because we sanction them. I don't think so. I think they could probably try to seek support from the UN, but I don't know that that will go very far because we have a veto power on it, uh, as well as our other of our allies would probably vote against it. So, I think this really comes down to if um, if Vlad feels like he's got absolute proof that we did it, then he has an obligation to respond. Um, and I think his response will be something else in the sea, something similar, probably um, a, a data communication cut. Uh, I think a line from the U.S. to either U.K. or to uh, mainland Europe uh, or both um, or potentially a power line. That could be another one. But that seems to be more, e- you know, it, it may be an easier fix. Um, and you know would have less impact to just a small region where something like an internet cable or internet cables plural uh, would actually wreak havoc across a lot uh, for a, a little bit longer period of time well we'll we'll end up following it we'll see we'll we'll tell you guys how it ends up you know how it ends up rolling out and then Kraken Special Unit announces destruction of observation tower in Russia. Before we get to that, I do want to remind you, if you do have a lack of survival food, you can go get 25-year shelf life survival freeze-dried food that's then sealed in Mylar bags and then sealed in buckets at marfuglenews.com prep. The price of freeze-dried food in general has gone up. It has actually tripled in the last three years. So if you think of it like this, if you can get bulk, it's the cheapest way to do so and get yourself prepared. This way, you actually get a discount at the same time. In three years from now, if it triples again, you will still have 22 years left on the shelf and you would have saved a whole lot of money. Uh, this is going to last until at least 2052. So if you think about that, it, it could. if you don't think that you're going to have some sort of disaster in the next 25 years, then I would say statistically that's almost impossible. Uh, regionally, we all have earthquakes, ter- uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, you know, whatever may happen, flooding. Uh, this is a really great way to set yourself up against that so you can actually survive in really tough spots. Uh, again, there's many things that could happen. It doesn't have to be the end of the world for this to come in handy. Make sure to go check it out with our code. There's all sorts of uh, really awesome deals with that code. Uh, Usually the three month always has the best deal. Either it's a big, huge discount or it's free gear. The last time I checked, it was a free Alexa Pure Pro. Dex, are they still giving away the Alexa Pure Pro? I know that that was, uh, that's like a 300 and As of this moment, yes. Uh, Okay. You get the the water, gravity fed water filtration system. Yeah. Free. so we always talk about the Alexa Pure Pro. They're actually throwing that in with the three-month supply. That's actually, I want to say, a $300-plus value. 
and they're throwing it in. That's a gravity-fed water filtration system. You'd want that to filter any kind of nasty water and make it potable. Plus, it's a gravity-fed. It's very large, so you can actually do a whole lot of water at once and very fast. Uh, it's especially good if you know if you get in a situation where, say, you're going to have to use it for dishes or for all other stuff, you're going to need a lot of water, and you don't want to sit there with a life straw or something. Uh, this is a really, really great thing to have. It reduces 99.9% .9 of the contaminants, including heavy metals, lead, fluoride, chlorine, viruses, bacteria, pesticides, and probably, I don't know, we will have to check, vinyl chloride. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Maybe that stuff's like invincible. And then 35 detained at the protest at New Atlanta Police Training Site. Now, this is something that, we'll go back to the crack in here. Well, um, this is something that a lot of folks were watching on Twitter and everybody was cheering on. These people need to be in jail. They need to get tear charges. And apparently, it sounds like some of them might. Nearly three dozen people have been detained after flame, throwing flaming bottles and rocks were thrown at uh, officers during a violent protest. Again, this is what an actual violent protest. And by the way, they they planned and organized this on Facebook and publicly. All of them talked about it. They literally put it out there like, we're going to cause ruckus, we're going to cause harm. Publicly. We're throwing at officers during a violent protest in a new police training center that's being uh, been the site for prior demonstrations and the death of a protester, Atlanta police said. Atlanta Police Chief Darren Sheerbaum said at midnight news conference that several pieces of construction equipment were set on fire Sunday at the site of the Atlanta Public Safety Training Center. It says surveillance video released by police show a piece of heavy, uh, heavy equipment in flames at the facility under construction that opponents call Cop City. It was among multiple pieces of construction equipment destroyed. Protesters dressed in all black threw large rocks, bricks, Molotov cocktails, and fireworks at police officers Sunday uh, at the construction site. Because, you know, all police are bad, right? Uh, either way, though, besides the whole police thing, the actual facility itself... This is something we talked about when they first planned it and talked about it. It was going to be some sort of like crazy training center. Uh, after when Jade Helm happened and then the rumors of this started circling, a lot of people thought, man, it, what it actually is this, right? But this, there's tons of video available. Go over to marfuglenews.com. Uh, you can go to this and then find all of those through this. Uh, or you can go to my Twitter. I uh, I will be I will share a few of the videos that were out there after the show. So make sure to follow me over there at Marfugel. Uh, and then, Dex, do you want to talk about the Kraken? Kraken? And gosh, I can just hear Jacob Israel saying like, oh, "It's the Kraken." Special unit announces destruction of the observation tower in Russia. Look at their uh, look at their logo too. It's the Kraken. If you know the significance there, then yeah, it's kind of crazy. The um with the uh the city here in Atlanta. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention, since I've got a little more information on it locally, when we were going down the list of the people they uh, arrested, it seemed like all were from out of town. They were not. There was maybe one or two uh, that were actual local. The rest were from other states. It was kind of uh, an, a weird. Maybe they all just moved here. I'm not sure. I suspect the other uh, something else is going on there as well. Um, and I do I do have some of those videos as well. So if you guys are looking for them, uh, the Kraken, apparently a drone took it out, according to UKR. Uh, it was in the Bronx Oblast region. So this is yet another hit. There's been many of these, but this is one that sort of was significant. It's an autonomous observation tower. Um, and they used a drone uh, to take out that tower, allegedly. So that's what they're claiming. Um, not a lot of detail here other than the claim they're making um, that the uh, special unit did that and um, that, you know, I guess a drone took out what they're using for other autonomous, uh, you know, observations. So uh, drone taking out the drone, so to speak.
Sorry, Dax. So that yeah. No, oh, it's okay. My my mute was stuck. Sorry about that. Uh, Believer Girl is here. What's up? B and G 2.0. Dale Jackson. What could go wrong? Ha ha. <laughs> yeah. B borrowed. Hey, Marf. When you are all going to get together a panel for another live Zoom? Uh, probably this week. Um, we don't know. Either it'll most likely be Friday or Thursday. Something like that. We haven't worked out. I do want to get more people involved. Get more mods involved if, if possible. Love for you guys to meet more. Ilea did a great job co-hosting on that. And, of course, make sure to go check out her channel over on marfuglenews.com slash friends. Um, and then, speaking of marfuglenews.com, uh, Dex, do you want to go over all of the web-only stuff? We've got a lot of crazy, crazy stuff going on over there as well. And then just... We an, certainly do. Another thanks, Be Real Beast, Kara Fuse, uh, Ilea, Make It Last Media, thank you so much. Uh, Carol, again, Carol McLean, thank you. Uh, and Carol, and uh, Mystery Mystery School, My Annuity Store, Inc., thank you, Stephen McMahon, Jimmy Wright, John Burnham, uh, we've got Jerry Shirts 99 Lola Cafe, thank you for being a longtime watcher, and thank you again for being here. Rusty88, Where's the Beef, Brett Butler, K. Holmes, Neil Nelson, XNYC Prepper, Ray The Way, Justin True, thank you for uh, all of the awesome info you've given us over the years. Jen A.W. and Joseph Newhouse. Hope you, you're doing well. I tried to check out your video. I don't know if you saw my comment on my other account there. And then Western Body. Thank you. Feathers and Flowers. Jay. Tina Garassi. Jacob Winter. Kiwi Lass. And Samuel Turner. And of course, Kingdoms of Erden. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. Uh, Dex, uh, let's go over the web only. We've got lots of crazy stuff there. Okay. Uh, yes, absolutely. Head over to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, or open up the show notes link. It's right there in the description on YouTube and Rumble. It'll take you right here. Lots going on. Don't go anywhere. Hang tight. Uh, apparently, our administration has fallen uh, again, going up the stairs of Air Force One. Yes, this is not the same report. This is a new one. They need an escalator. Um, yeah, they, they need an elevator, I think, or maybe a forklift. That would be kind of funny. Um, yeah, they need something. Uh, there was a, a, speaking of air travel, I know we've covered these before. There's another one that happened. It was like this long nine hour flight, an ordeal with, uh, the inability for them to land due to weather. The entire plane was shooken up. People were sick. They got, they had to land at an airport that was closed. They had to wait for the airport to get open, uh, late at night. So they could then sit inside the airport, and not go anywhere. They get back in a plane and fly to where they were going and go through it all again. Uh, kind of a, some of these air stories are just getting crazier and crazier. I don't know if I, I guess they're, you know, this stuff does happen, but I think um, it's kind of weird that we're getting all these air travel uh, stories here uh, in the last month. Um, there's other updates going on with uh, Vlad. So we've got some updates on the Russia's troops. We've got Zelensky's uh, vowing to not um, retreat from Bakhmut, although uh, Vlad is saying they've taken it, and it's I think even the U.S. has told them they need to back out of there because uh, they're not going to win. Um, there's a, a crazy kidnapping story and video that happened in Mexico. If you want to see that, that's there. Of course, we've got some of the uh, political coverage that's happening, especially with DeSantis and uh, even the current administration, and then uh, Fetterman, I guess, has now been seen, even though he's still in the hospital. So there's some updates on that. A lot of people have a lot of questions about what's going on there, as well as additional coverage. Of course, there's the uh, obligatory Elon uh, stuff, such as uh, there's a documentary coming out. I didn't know that. That's kind of new. Um, and uh, apparently there's uh, some information about his bathroom experiences. So they actually have bodyguards that follow him to the restroom. I don't know why that's surprising, but maybe it kind of is. Hey, Bruce Willis's wife, uh, you know, for those of you that don't know, he's going through some really nasty events with his health, and I think it's getting so bad they're trying to get the paparazzi to quit yelling at the guy. Um, I don't even know that he can understand what's going on, but feel bad for him. Um, lots going on in uh, in overseas with some farmers. If you haven't heard about the uh, – they headed into the city with tractors – Kind of a crazy protest there if you want to check that out. Uh, Walmart ex exiting Portland is uh, pretty much almost done. I think they were closing the last of their stores uh, there over theft. 
and some human gene editing rules uh, that G claims are in line with what the world governments want, but a lot of people are saying they kind of aren't. And so there's some questions about that, as well as Bezos' $500 million yacht is now setting sail. Uh, that and so much more. It's all there on marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show or open up that show notes link in the description right there on YouTube and Rumble. Isn't it just uh, so freaking purposeful that, it, okay, so I have seen it here, the 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 theft and just people walking out with uh, carts of stuff. There is a there's a overall purpose for that. Now the Walmarts are closing down, right? All of these markets with cheaper stuff, they're all closing. I don't think this is an accident. During CV when it all started and they just stopped charging people with crimes or they would if you were in there you stole a $1000 TV, they would put you in the back of the cop car, take your picture and go, "Don't go to Walmart," and then they would let you go. I mean, like, they, they weren't doing anything. Most people didn't even get put in the back of a cop car. And they say they were doing all these other things, but at the same time, people were walking out night after night after night with full carts. If you go to Target here at 10 o'clock at night, you will be there for 20 minutes shopping for your stuff, and you'll hear the back door go, wee, 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 wee. And then you'll hear an employee run, and then 10 minutes later, wee, wee, wee. Guess what? Well, then after they, the insurance companies won't do it anymore, then they close down those stores. Then those areas are left without these, you know, more affordable markets. And then they're left buying from the Amazons or left with this or left with that. It doesn't help anybody. I just think it's, it's just like they're, they're closing all of these stores due to theft. Here's an idea. And by the way, the cities are all one leaning party cities that like went super lax on theft. They went so lax on theft that now some of the biggest, most successful stores are just closing. Even with security, police officers on duty, they're closing. Seems like almost an excuse too. It's like, now they get to close and they're, they might use them for staging or whatever the heck they're doing now. But it's just, it, I, I just can't believe it. I mean, it, it pisses you off when you're sitting there spending your, your hard earned money and somebody just walks out with 10 times what you can afford and doesn't even get arrested. Cops will literally sit there and go, okay, see you later. It's like, are you kidding? Have you seen it in your town? Do you live in a metropolis? I know you have. Uh, if you're in the country, maybe it doesn't happen so much out there. Maybe some people, you know, maybe the local, you know, sheriffs there just don't take it. But here, it's insane. In Seattle and around Seattle, I'm, I would not be surprised if they closed down uh, all of the locations here. That's how bad it is. There's uh, if you'll drive like a block away from all the Walmarts, Targets, and you'll see a congregation of people with carts full of stuff and they're trading things. It's insane. They just get free stuff. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you, everybody that came tonight. Tomorrow is going to be even a crazier show. We have a lot of things that are potentially happening tomorrow, so tune in. Tomorrow's not going to be one you want to miss. So be back here. Uh, Dex, thank you for your service tonight. Much love. Great job, brother. And then, of course, thank you, mods. Make sure to say what's up to Wages World or Ilea or Trinity, CG Blaze, or any of the mods that made it tonight. They have done an awesome job. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Cheryl Aikens. Isn't Walmart owned by China? I don't think they're, they're probably big oligarchs own chunks of it. But no, almost everything in a Walmart is from China. I heard money gen will be PAL STs. Let's see here. Uh, person turquoise. What's going on? Hey, C heart think. Thank you. Carol, little Nam, Carmen Petraca. Appreciate you guys. Full worm moon tomorrow. I don't know what a worm moon is. I'll have to look that up. Constitution was written for moral men, not good for America. 
<laughs> Have a good night. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marf out. It is now time for the shout outro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shout outro. <laughs> on how all this works a lot of people have asked over the years been trying to I used to have this camera set up but my old computer couldn't run more than one camera it just slowed everything down RC 505 old M50 MPC one underneath and then a simple Yamaha mixer which actually needs to be replaced Let's make a fresh song. It looks like tonight's song will be for Kara Fuse.
I do it 